Hi everybody, it's Leslie at Dandelion Cottage and welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. Today I have on my desk a snowdrop. So um, I live in Northwest Connecticut in a town that has the nickname of the Ice Box of Connecticut because it's substantially colder here than at other locations around the state. But today we do have signs of spring. So I brought this little snowdrop inside so I could paint a, a quick study and show you how I begin. So I'm just going to push this away. And uh, this is hot press watercolor paper. And this is just a, a number two pencil. And the first thing I'm going to do is just lightly draw across the page to get it situated so I know that I'm, I'm not too close to any of the edges. And uh, I'm just doing a, a rough drawing. This is a little study and typically I'll use a, um, a quick study like this to get acquainted with the subject matter. It's not meant to be a, uh, a finished painting. It's just a, an exercise and it's something that I recommend everybody do as regularly as possible. Um, it's just like going to the gym and uh, it helps to keep your drawing hand ready. And it also gives you a nice little collection of studies that you can use as ideas for future pictures. So that's enough. Not much there but I'll refine the drawing as I go along with my paints. So um, I'm just going to keep, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to keep a very limited palette today. I'm just using red, yellow, and blue, just three colors. And I'm going to begin with a green mixture. And this is a little, little bit on the yellow side. It's uh, fairly dilute. And I'm just going to begin to uh, get some of these leaves started, like so. Now I want to be careful here because I want to go around the white petal, like so. And these flowers have these. Um, really nice little tops that eventually turn into the seed capsule. And I want to make sure that I get that because it's a distinctive feature of this particular plant. And also, they have this little hood that hangs over the top like that. And that I think that helps them to emerge out of the soil and protect the uh, flower from getting damaged. All right, and then there's another leaf behind here. And that goes past the blossom and out the other side. All right, and then I have, um, I have some of the leaf litter left from the fall. And this is a collection of sticks and leaves and soil, twigs. There, I see some um, seed pods from the hydrangeas and uh, some other interesting texture. So I'm just, I'm just going to indicate that I don't want to draw too much attention away from the flower. So I'm just going to kind of get that started with a, a light wash. 
and this is kind of a, um, a warm brownish mixture. Maybe there's a couple of spots here and there that are darker, that just uh, gives a nice variation in, in tone here. And I'm not, I'm not over mixing the colors. I'm letting the the different tones kind of merge on the paper. Okay, now let's get back to those leaves. So this is my second pass. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker. I'm gonna to begin to end, indicate some of the shadow areas. So that's starting to come along. And now um, I want to do something with the flower. So I'm taking, a, because the, the flower is white, I'm going to take a very, very pale tone for the shadow area. So I'm just mixing a lot of, I know it's off camera, but I'm just mixing a lot of water with a little little red, yellow, and blue all, all mixed together, keeping it a little bit on the cool side. And I can, I can test that. And just get a little indication of the shadow side of, of some of these petals. add a couple of uh, slightly darker areas and now I see I'm taking I'm going back into the green adding a little more blue um, I can develop these leaves a little further Now the base of this stem, as it gets closer to the soil, gets lighter, and probably because it's protected from the sunlight by the leaf litter. And all I'm doing now is I'm, I'm continuing to um, refine my drawing, looking for a few little characteristic details that I can put in. And I want to add some darker accents because I've pretty much got my middle tones and my light tones established. So 
Now I just want to get some dorks here and there. So there's a good spot here. Indicate some of these sticks and twigs. And there are some kind of reddish tones in these seed pods. So I want to get a little indication of that here and there. And just, you know, some of the texture. So I'm just kind of stippling some little dots to indicate that texture of those things. And I see a couple of pine needles. Going back into the green now and getting some of my darkest tones. So I can put some of that in here. In this fold of the leaf here. up under here. So I'm just um, working from light to dark, taking my time, developing the, the tones and my drawing as I go along. Making sure I haven't forgotten anything. And now I'm going to take a mixture of red and blue and uh, take a little bit of this violet and mix it in with my green to get a nice dark accent. And I'll just put that in my darkest place here. And I can just push that color along and help it to uh, blend with the surrounding tones. And then I think I need a couple of little, little more drawing. In the center of the flower, there are some green accents in between the petals, like so. And a little, uh, just a little bit here. And that's about, that's about it for a quick study. You don't need much more than that. And um, you could always do a couple of them. So thank you so much for joining me here today at Dandelion Cottage. I'll have more information on my website, dandeliancottage.com. And I'm going to be working on my uh, descriptions today. In a little while so check over there and uh, and I will have more information if you're interested in recreating something like this or if you'd like to learn more about Dandelion Cottage and me I'm Leslie Watkins and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday right here for Paper Crafting Saturday at 12 noon. All for now. Bye.